the holidays. Is there anything more wonderful than being surrounded by your family and friends? Or eating wonderful meals and exchanging gifts? Or how about being hacked and slashed by an insane killer? Everything from Halloween to Christmas and even Thanksgiving has had the fortune, or misfortune, of having a slasher treatment. And it seems like every holiday has been covered, right? Even... Fall Break? The Mutilator, aka Fall Break, is a 1985 slasher that takes place on the not well-known holiday. I guess it's just a regional thing, because where I live, Fall Break is where students get school off for about three days in October. But enough of the questionable holiday, back to the movie. To be fair, the movie isn't bad, there are certainly a lot worse out there. It just doesn't offer a whole lot. There are a few decent deaths here and there, but that's pretty much it. Apart from a few good kills, The Mutilator is just another average, if quite generic, post-Friday the 13th horror film. The movie opens in a cabin in the woods. Inside, a kid and his mom are preparing for his dad's birthday. As a birthday present, the kid decides to clean his dad's guns. Well, that's nice and all, but riddle me this. What part of cleaning a gun requires you to actually point and shoot it? Dad, I cleaned the gun! Uh-oh, I did that thing! No sooner than when Mommy drops Dad, Daddy comes home and finds the rather unexpected birthday present. And what is his reaction? After he slaps his son, he proceeds to drag his obviously dead wife into another room where he takes what his son wrote for his birthday and puts it on his wife and pours some whiskey into her dead mouth. Don't you think calling 911 would have sufficed? I think so. Flash forward a few years, Ed, the kid who shot his mom, is now in college and he and his friends, who all look like breakfast club rejects and are all in a desperate need of a personality transplant, are in a serious dilemma. Go to the beach, go to the mountains, do something. Don't say I didn't tell you so. No plans, nothing to do. So we'll sit around here just like we did last year. It's depressing. Amidst their bitching, Ed gets a yeah. phone call, and while he takes it, his girlfriend yeah. decides to tell everyone his secret. When he was a little boy, Ed accidentally shot her. Oh, man. Wow, what a girlfriend. I mean, it's not like she would take such a traumatizing secret of a boyfriend and just casually tell it to her friends. Oh no. As it turns out, the caller was Ed's dad. My dad? And he wants me to close up his condo for the winter. Turn off the water, turn off electricity, pour some antifreeze in the plumbing. It's a snap, nothing to it. We can handle that. Yeah, how come we didn't know you had a condo at the beach? Whoa, time out. Let's not forget that Ed shot his mom and his dad practically hates him. Is it really a good idea to go to the beach house? What do you say? Four days of R&R &R at the beach. I'm in. She's in. I'm in. No? No? Mm-mm. I got a bad feeling about this. Really? I wonder why. Oh well. Without stupid characters, there wouldn't be a plot now, would there? Have you noticed in a lot of horror movies there are signs that foreshadow a character's fate that any intelligent person would follow, but the characters are always so oblivious to it? Well, this movie's no exception. Sign number one. The car's engine messes up. Oh, come on, even the car knows this is a bad idea. Sign number two. When they arrive, the door is wide open and there are empty bottles of booze everywhere. Sign number three. Ed's dad keeps a framed picture of a man he ran over with a ski boat. Yeah. And finally, sign number four. The man keeps weapons in the house. And I don't mean stuff and like guns. Okay. I mean stuff like a battle axe, which wouldn't you know is missing. Uh, one of my dad's favorite things is battle axe. It's not there now. <laughs> no shit. Just in case you haven't figured it out, the killer is Ed's dad. Daddy apparently hasn't forgiven his son over the accidental matricide. He even has these weird dreams about killing his son as a kid. <laughs> After they settle in and have dinner, the movie follows a basic slasher formula. The characters go off on their own, the killer finds them, and the killer kills them. And to start this off, two of the characters decide to go off on their own and they end up at a pool. Not long after that, the girl is drowned. In slow mo. 
Ocean. All while her boyfriend is still in the pool and somehow doesn't notice that his girlfriend is getting killed. Thinking that his girlfriend is playing a game with him, he follows a trailer for clothes back to the beach house garage, only to get a chainsaw in the gut. Not too long after those two have left, the rest decide to go walking on the beach to look for them. Instead, they find a cop. Or to be accurate, a cop finds them. After they converse, the cop goes to poke around the beach house, and he ultimately loses his head. When Ben and the others get back, they play an incredibly pointless game called Blind Man's Bluff, but they try to find each other in the dark. That would have been a perfect setup for a few kills. But no! It turns out to be an incredibly pointless scene! Ben's dad walks around and does absolutely nothing! The game only lasts for roughly four minutes, but it's so incredibly tedious to sit through. Well, after that wasted opportunity, Ben and his girlfriend go to bed. The other two decide to have fun. Well, at least they would have, but the other guy's girlfriend wants him to look for the other two that haven't come back yet and to lock up the house leading to probably one of the funnier sure moments in the movie. I've got something to show you when you get back. Whoa, Lord. Goodness gracious. Yeah. No, I did not edit that. That is exactly how it appears in the movie. And while looking for the missing two, he decides to be a dumbass and act stupid where Ben's dad is sleeping. This, of course, does not end well. <laughs> Not long after, Ben, his girlfriend, and the dumbass's girlfriend decide to go looking for him. And along the way, Ben and his girlfriend separate from the other chick, and she dies in possibly one of the best deaths in any slasher movie. Ow! Damn! That's nice. Uh, just too bad it was in this movie. In the end, the surviving two find the bodies, Ben's dad shows up, and a battle of epic proportion commences. Well, epic considering the budget. And even after all that, Ben's dad still gets up, attacks a car, gets burned by a car lighter, gets cut in half, and stays alive long enough to sever some random cop's leg. Now that's amazing. No one messes with him. Not even the Terminator. Hell, he might as well be the Terminator. Ben and his girlfriend survive, both end up in a hospital, and... That's it. The movie's over. Now, I know I've spent the majority of this review basically bashing the movie, but overall, it's... It's just okay. I mean, it is what it is. It's a mid-80s slasher film, which is basically a rip-off of Friday the 13th. But... What would I suggest? I would suggest... Get a few friends, order a pizza, get some soda, pop this in, and um, don't take it too seriously, and you should enjoy it. Left about a month before, and we're gonna have a good time. Gonna have a good Apart from a few good kills, the meat layer is just another, another, another. Okay, I seem to have lost the movie. God damn it. Fuck. Where'd it go?